webinar all about string art. Uh, you may have seen this activity with the TI Inspire, but it's also possible to do on the TI 84 Plus CE. And with the nice color features, uh, we can take something that traditionally we used to do with um, pen and paper, um, or equally with nails and string. If you want to do a practical example of this, it would be a great activity to make it look like a computer version. And how about that? Slightly different to the worksheet that you may have in front of you at the moment, but basically the same thing. And I'll just say the, the few changes that I've done to make that. So obviously we get students who have their characters on all the different screens to start with. So let's get this uh, computer back to its normal settings. So I'm just going to go and do a few things. We could either go into reset. Uh, one thing is to reset all the de defaults. That's the first thing that I would do. Notice I'm running 5.4 operating system. If you don't know um, how to do that on, onto your handheld or onto the computer, then please visit the TI Australia website, and it will show you how to do that. Uh, so I'm running 5.4, uh, the new system. And we also um, have some stuff in stats, so I'm just going to clear that as well. We could, like I said, uh, do re uh, reset all RAM, but I don't want to do that because that will reset everything on my computer, and that would be a nightmare. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and uh, clear all the lists that were there. Thank you very much. That's now done. And I'm also going to delete some of those list names. So if I come into management, I can delete some of those list names, number four. And you see down here, I've got some ones that were hidden away down here that I was using. And I'm going to show you how to do all those. So I'm just going to delete those by pressing the delete button. And if we quit that now, we should see that in Y equals, oh, there's still some stuff there. So I'll just clear that this way. I could have actually done it differently using the mem button again on the delete, but that's okay. You can do it that way. Stat is now clear, although there's no list there at all now. So that's okay. Normally you'd have your Y1, L1, L2, etc., but that's because I'm just doing it differently today. Um, and you'll notice that the format um, is back to the traditional format. So if we go back to graph now, we're back to the original. So what are we trying to do? Well, we're trying to um, draw uh, what we can do on pen and paper here. And obviously, this revolves around linear graphs. And there's lots of mathematics, as you've seen in the worksheet uh, for the students um, to do. Um, and as you can see on question three, they have to come up with those equations. Um, I could type all those in, but you really don't want to watch a webinar of me typing those in. So I've saved those. If I go into to MEM, I've got it grouped in here. So at the moment, let me just show you. Let's quit out of that. I've got nothing in Y1. It's like a magic trick, this. I'm going to go into MEM, and I'm going to go down to group. And I've grouped something in MEM. Um, here it is, called my Y string. All right, so I'm going to type 1 in there. And it's now dumped them all into my Y equals. So we can see they're all now there. And obviously, normally, the students would type those in by hand. Um, if you've got the old worksheet, there's one error, uh, which um, I think is Y5. It should say 80, not 86. But you could let the students work that out for themselves, I suppose, um, just to make sure you're happy how to type that in. Um, we're going to use the negative button, so negative. A fraction button, you can find it in many ways. The quick way now is in the alpha X button. There's the fraction button. Oops, sorry, not 6. You can just write over that, 2 over 9 power across, x is obviously here. And again, if you do it and you actually type in 92 and then you realize you want it as a fraction, if you still press alpha x, it will still convert to a fraction, a bit quicker even. Um, there we go. And if we graph that, beautiful. And as we go live, we can see those lines being drawn. Notice at the moment that I haven't set the window, um, as the activity does um, in the teacher notes on step three. Um, and we can see that it's rectangular. And we could talk about why that's the case. And I'll, again, talk about that a bit later. But we can change the window. If we follow what's on the, um, on the worksheet, uh, we can go negative 20 to 20, um, going up by 1 every time. And I think they asked us to do negative 15 to 15, going up by 1, because that's where the dash is going to be. And like I said, if you um, had left that before, you'd see that um, one of those points, those lines was out. So that's on the new worksheet that's been updated. And there it is, beautiful. Um, so obviously we want the students to fill in the other section. Um, and also we want it to be a circle, not an oval. So to, that's easily solved. We would simply go to zoom and do zoom square. That would just adjust the window so it looks like a square window instead so that everything is uh, in proportion. 
I remember going to the cinema once, and, and they had an adjust the screen setting, and it was like this wide view of everybody, which is a bit weird. But there we go. We can see a quarter of a circle being made. But how do we do the rest of it? Well, obviously, what we would like to do um, is to go back into Y equals and type more of them in, even though the students may groan at that. Um, but that just isn't going to be possible because we've only got uh, 10 lines that are possible to draw. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to clear uh, all those. So again, I'll do it differently this time. Um, oops, sorry. I'm going to go second mem um, into mem delete, and I want the y vars. I'm going to delete all those, and to see all these in here, just going to delete all that was in there before to clear all those out. There we go. Easy as that. And back in y equals are now all clear. So how are we going to do it? Well, that leads us into question five and thinking about the sets that we need to create, um, and then equally how we put them uh, into our lists. So um, Notice I deleted those. Um, the other option is if you had kept them there, we could have actually grouped them, as the worksheet says, and we could have gone into number eight and created a group. So if we created a group, I'd have come up with a name, and I could have done it that way as well. But I haven't. I've just pressed delete and got rid of them all. All right. So we want to put them into stat, into the list columns. But it would be nice if they weren't just list one, list two, list three, list four, list five. It actually had a name at the top instead. Um, if your students have lost their list, they can go into stat. Let me just quit that for a second. They can go into stat setup editor, and they can just run it as normal, and that will reset it. Uh, but also, um, they can go into setup editor um, and add some variables to add. So I've already done that already, so I'm going to show you that. I'm just going to come up and copy that again. So I'm actually going to set up editor, and I'm going to have new list labeled x1, y1, y2, x2, y2, the gradient, and the Incept. And if we do that now and go back into stat, we can now see that we've got these titles. Just like an Excel document where we have titles, it's just a much nicer and more relevant to the students than having just list one, list two, etc. So now we're going to do the points. And if we go back either to question three and look at the solutions, we've got to think about what the points were. So the X values originally for the X1s were zero to nine. We could get the students to type those in by hand, but another nice feature is to show them the sequence command. Uh, so we go up to the very top here uh, onto X1, and we go into list, and we go across to operations, and we can see the sequence here. And the sequence is going to be just going up by, uh, the expression is X, and the variable is X, are so just going up by um, X amount each time. We want to start at 0, and we want to finish at 9. So if I paste that in, there we can see it down here, and when I press Enter, it drops all the numbers 1 to 9. And again, we could get the students to type in all the numbers, um, because obviously the Y value on that first one, when we have the original graph, all the Y numbers are, are the same. They're all 10. They're all coming across here at 10. So uh, to save doing that, we can be, again, we can use a sequence. And a nice question to ask students, how can you use a sequence to, uh, to do that? Now, I think that would actually, even though simpler, would actually make them think a little bit more. Um, but obviously, you guys all know uh, we're going to type that in as expression as 10, because the variable won't make any difference. Um, and we're still going to desk our counting numbers. So it's a bit like sigma, not sigma notation, I suppose, a little bit. Um, and if we do the same there, then we get 10 in every one. Again, a, a cheat's way is, well, really, we want 10 for all the x this time, because going back to the original document, all these values here are now going to stay at x equals 10. So this is now our x2. So we just want to copy this one. Um, normally, we would go into... Um, use the list one, list two in these blue buttons above the numbers one to six. But this time we want X2, so the, uh, sorry, Y1, I apologize. So to find that, we go into list, and we can see that we do have our normal lists, but further down we have all the other ones. And I bet you that zero, if I scroll down, is going to be, oh, no, it's not us, X2, which is alphabetical, silly me. Good job I've checked. It's Y1. And, and that's what you want. That's going to be all the tens. So there you go. That's a nice way. And a really nice way, again, is there the students could type it in, but do they know how they could do it um, using this up here? Well, it's the same numbers, but in reverse. Um, so how can we do the same numbers as these, but in reverse? Nice question to ask them. Well, hopefully they'll, they'll quickly say to you, well, it's simple. It's 9 minus the x1 value. And if we do that, we can see that now we have three numbers in reverse. 
And now we're going to do the gradient. And uh, nice again, we could get them to do it on paper by hand. That's where they would have come up with the answers to question three anyway. But thinking about how we could use it on Excel or equally on this graphics calculator, um, we're going to come up to the top here and put a formula in so we'll do all of the formulas in one go. Um, and I like to use the fraction button here, which is in, as you know, alpha x. Uh, so we've got the fraction button. And what we're doing, we're doing the absolute classic, which is y2, on arrow up to get to the bottom quicker, minus, and notice how it puts this little L in front for this, y1, there it is, come up to that one, all over, and again, nice for them to have that visual with that confirmation, it's always the same, you know, second one, second one, or first one, first one, it's the zero one, take away the ninth one. And bingo. Oh, should have paused there, but I didn't. I was so excited about seeing those answers. We can see that now those are all the fractions. Nice to just check them off. Um, we can see it sort of coming together. And we can scroll down. Because I've got it in fraction mode, um, it's then drawn, given them as fraction answers. But if we'd done it as with brackets and the divide line, then it would just give them as decimals. Um, so we can arrow across, or we could convert them to decimals by adding, um, and I'll just quit that to show you where we could do that. If you wanted to do that, in math, we can convert them to decimals here, number two. So we could have actually converted them to decimals. Um, so I'll go back into my list, and now we've got to do the C value. Now, again, the C value, I think, on the worksheet, that um, it just said to type those numbers in. But I was thinking about this and thinking, well, we know that we normally use, would use Y equals MX plus C, or a version of that, depending on which state or which country you're in. Uh, but uh, we could rearrange that into C equals. So that would be the Y value minus the gradient times the equivalent x value. Um, and perhaps we get half the class to do with x2 and y2, and the other class to do with x1, y1. So the c value is either the y values. So let's choose y1, the first point, minus the gradient, which is 8. Now, um, I'll leave that like that. Yep, times, just in case we do need to have a times in there, better just put one in just in case rather than leaving it out, times uh, the equivalent x1 value. And we'll find the x1 value. There it is at 9. Press Enter. And bingo, there's all our answers. Yep, few E. We're all good. They're all there. Students can scroll down. Like I said, they can convert them to decimals. And if they do want to see them a bit clearer uh, in the calculator screen here, they can get those values back by still going into list. Uh, and let's say choose, I'll oh, choose the C value, which is number 7. And you can see that it will give them as a set values. And see the arrow over here to the right-hand side, we can just arrow across and see all those values. So a really nice way of visualizing them. And now, the fait accompli, as they say, we now need to obviously uh, to graph those. So we'll graph the same one as we did before, um, but it will be now generic because what it's going to do is it's going to take each of the values from the list, so from in here. Uh, and it's going to take each one at a time and use the M and C value for each one and graph them. So the first one is just Y equals MX plus C. So Y equals MX plus C. So M we know is in here. Here it is, 8. And notice again it drops the L in saying it's in a list. And it's MX. It's not, um, it's just a general X value, not X1, because that would be a specific case to give us the uh, straight line. We're just going to use the normal X values on the the graph to plot it. Um, so y equals mx plus. Now, I already know there's going to be a mistake with this. Um, and I'll just pause for a second. Can you see what the mistake would be? Or pause the uh, video and see what the mistake would be? Well, let's have a look. And it gives us an error because, so most students will quit this very quickly. So let's not quit it. Let's go to the error, ah, it says it's here. Ah, oh, that's right, there needs to be a times in there. So second insert, just above the delete, a times, and now it will graph it. Beautiful. Look at that. Fantastic. Um, so we're now going to do the rest. And if we get, again, thinking about the rest, and the, and the assignment works through that, talking about oh, how the rest do change. And I suppose, to some extent, the uh, teacher's notes sort of give it away, really. It'd be nice to... Um, have to be a bit more um, thought-provoking ourselves. So if we're now going to do um, these uh, lines over here, well, then we know that um, the Y values um, aren't going to change, but all the X values become the negative X values. 
Again, we can do that very, very neatly because we're actually going to take the same one as here, the same equation, to find that. You could go into vars, that's the old way, but the quicker way is alpha f4. There's y1. Um, and it's just a bit like function notation. It's y1 of all the negative x values. So negative, not the takeaway, the negative x values. And if we press enter now, then that's going to be exactly the same as y1, except instead of wherever we've got x, we're going to use minus x, and wherever it's negative x, it will become positive x. Let's have a look at that. Beautiful. Looking good. And then we just repeat that um, coming around the shape. So again, if we were thinking here, then what changes here? Well, everything changes. The y's become negative and the x is become negative. So is there a way of doing that? Well, um, there probably is. We can just take y2 and make that negative because we want the negative x and we want the negative y. So again, let's be a bit smart about this. And don't forget, students were doing this on their handheld, they can still take screenshots using TI Connect. Um, and if you're wanting to produce a little worksheet of your own with this, then when you can simply use the camera button here uh, and take some screenshots and actually run with it like this as well. So there's plenty of options for you here. Uh, and there's even um, recording opportunities on here as well that you could actually use if you wanted to make your own little worksheets of the students. So Y2 this time, negative Y2, that should now work. Let's just graph that as we go along. Keeps the last one, draws the next one in. Looking nice. Got to wait for it to finish. If you do want to stop it early, you can press second off, and that will turn it off. Let's just stop it quick early. Um, with, but it's nice to see it grow up, build up. And what's the last one going to be? Well, the X stays positive. We want the X to be the same value as it was before. Sorry, it doesn't stay positive. It is what it was before. But the Y, whatever it was before, is the in, uh, negative of itself. So that means that we're going to keep... Um, this time y1, but we're going to make the y values all negative. And if I've done that right, now we could add the x. I think on the worksheet it has the x. We don't need to in this context because uh, x will just be x anyway, so that's no big stress um, if we graph that. There we go. So how did I make it look like the, the video, oh, sorry, the photo at the very start? Well, I just changed the, the window slightly. Um, I wanted to bring it in a bit, so I changed it. Uh, if I remember rightly, to negative uh, 18 to 18 on the y-axis because it is a rectangle. Um, and I want it, because obviously on the, um, the diagram, we don't want this axis in the middle and it goes out to 10. We sort of want the lines here. I remember um, at primary school when I did it, we'd do just the, the L shape, um, which we used to do, and then we used to build up and make this sort of shape. Um, so uh, we only want the actual at the 10 values. So we can change that to have some marks at 10. And we're going to change this one from negative 11 to 11. Again, we want the, the marks at 10. Uh, what else do we need to do? Well, we want to make them all the same color. So we're going to come down here, come across to, oh, sorry, I'm missing it. Come across to the red, press Enter, and arrow to the right to make whatever color. There we go. Arrow down or press Enter. I'm going to go OK on that one. Come down one more. Enter again, couple of arrows, cross, enter a few more times, done, one more to go. There we go. That's all now in blue. And just a few more things. I'm going to go into format, and I'm going to turn the grid lines on. So that's going to draw grid lines every, um, every 10. So I'm going to turn that on. And light gray is good. I could change the color, I suppose, to make them... Uh, a bit darker. Can we go a bit darker? Gray. Gray is good. We go black, I suppose, but I like gray. Um, and I could go off on the axes, um, but I'm actually not. I'm actually going to go white. And I wonder if you can think why that is the case. Uh, and the last thing, just one more thing. So obviously, at the moment, the window is still forced to be a certain size. I'm going to go zoom square. Um, that would then, like I said, proportion everything up. And if I've done that correct, we can see the, the white axis there. Uh, hidden away nicely. We can say we get the, the beautiful uh, string string art that the um, pencil lines would have given us, the elastic bands and uh, nails would have given us, or string. Um, I shouldn't say elastic bands, so the activity's wrong, isn't it? So the string would have given us, uh, but now we've got it as a digital version um, that students can um, include in their assignment. 
like I said, use TI Connect. And there it is. Beautiful. Um, and I think that is that. If you do have any questions, please contact TI Australia. I know that they'll be uh, more than helpful, uh, willing to help you. Um, and also, like I said, we have trainers all over Australia who are willing to uh, share their knowledge and advice. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. And please uh, look at some more TI Australia videos and webinars um, and activities. Thank you.